This is the Johnny's Pizza House Friday Night Blitz brought to you by Car Giant Auto Group. Welcome back, everyone. What a night of high school football. Round two tonight on the Friday Night Blitz. We're going to talk about some of the top matchups of the night. Wesley, St. Paul's, Covington, Louisiana, making the longest trip of any team in the entire state, taking on Northwood tonight. I was at this game. This was a slugfest. 35 to 9, Northwood gets the win, but the Northwood special teams come up huge here. Tooney Collins with the block and the scoop and score. We also, in the fourth quarter, Northwood forces a turnover in the St. Paul's red zone. But the takeaway I have, St. Paul's had two goal to go situations at both the second quarter and the, and the third quarter and decided to kick field goals, and I think that that was the difference. I mean, you're in the dance. I mean, yeah. you're, you drove 300 miles. Right. Take I some don't chances. Understand. I do, and, and, and look, I really don't, I really did not understand it. I don't know, because at one point it was to make it a one possession game, there, but the second field goal was that it was 21 6. They made it 21 9. And Northwood's defense, give them all the credit in the world, they get it done tonight. And you watch these highlights, you see it over and over again. Talk about the defense, talk about the special teams. That's Northwood's bread and butter. We're not going to make a lot of mistakes, and we're going to capitalize whenever you make mistakes. Northwood setting the tone with their playoff win. Off to the quarterfinals, 35 to 9. All right, John, so it's hard to talk about this game and not talk about the way this game ended, but is it not a microcosm of what we've seen from this Benton team all season long? Mm -hmm. In control, seemingly so in control that nothing I mean, look at these bad highlights. can happen. You look at these highlights, you're like, wow, this Benton runs away with this game. And then just some stuff happening in the second half. Obviously, we weren't there. To, Which, to, to witness this I stuff. I was there for these plays, yes. and I don't know how this was a game in the first place, yes. honestly. Because Benton was dominating, and then if you're just now joining us, if you haven't seen on social media, Benton had the ball with one second left at their own 13-yard line on fourth down. All they needed to do was run around and throw the ball out of bounds, and the game was over. Instead, they kneel. They only take half a second off the clock. One second remains. Denham Springs goes out and kicks a 30-yard field goal, and they win 29-28. Benton's season comes to an end. And it's 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 so tough because obviously you don't do that without asking the ref first, right? And and they tell you and, one thing, and, and then obviously and this Moore happens. Says that he did ask the ref. And then look, I mean, at the end of the day, you, you look what Benton's been able to accomplish the last two years: winning playoff games, hosting playoff games. Tigers coach Moore, he's built something special and over still there. still a relatively new 5A program. Yep. So we're going to miss the seniors. They've been so much fun to watch, but unfortunately their season ends. Delhi and Homer. Homer looking to make it back to the Dome. It's crazy that in this talent-rich entire region across the four states, only one team won a state title last year, and that was Homer. With the Pelicans' performance tonight against Delhi, we now have a rematch of last year's 1A state title game between Homer and Logan Sport. I got to tell you, I asked Coach Casey what the difference is between last year's team and this year's team. The difference is, is that this year's team has expectations. John, the storylines write themselves in this upcoming rematch. Obviously, Cam Boykins last year setting the record for most interceptions thrown in a state championship game, but he's back. Mm -hmm. Javen Claybrook's back. Yep. That connection's been so special the last two years, and you have to think that that, that Logan Sport's going to lean on that in this matchup again. But like you said, you said it earlier, you've been saying it all night, this Homer team, so overwhelming, so much yeah. talent. Even their losses, it's hard to say, hey, that was a good loss. They've had some great losses. They have. They've had some great losses against some quality One opponents. One combined loss of the records of the three teams that beat them. Incredible. So Homer's moving on. Logan Sport, we know they're moving on. And let's take a look at how Logan Sport did it tonight. And like you said, Wesley, a team that is loaded with talent. And they lost some games, too, early in the season. They dropped the district title in Week uh, 9 against St. Mary's. But since then, they've been rolling. They've been rolling, John. And, you know, at the end of the day, it, this, this is a team, I think at the end of the day, like it, it, it means something to have been there before. It mm -hmm. means something to consistently be playing football in late November and December. And it pays off in games like this, right? It pays off in games like this. I'm so excited for this <laughs> matchup next week. You better believe one of us is going to be there. You know it. You know it. Next Friday at Homer, if you're looking for something to do, that's the place to be. Houghton. Obviously, the huge upset over Airline, possibly the biggest upset in the entire state a week ago. A favorable matchup against a similar East St. John team, but in the end, the Houghton defense couldn't make it happen two weeks in a row. And John, this, this Houghton season, obviously beating, beating Airline 
last week, only their second win against their line since 2015, yep. since Coach Brotherton arrived his first season in 2016. He said, look, we, we, we don't beat these guys. It doesn't matter how good we are, we don't beat these guys. Uh, so for them to do what they did last week, host this playoff game this week, it was improbable enough. Play this team very tough tonight. And God, gonna hate to see Connor Blank go, Colin Raines go. So many, so many kids on these teams tonight. It's weird. Because we're not going to say their names yeah. to get on the show. It's, it's strange. Especially a guy like Reigns, who it feels like he's been there for eight years. Yep. You know, he'll move on to Northwestern State to play for Demon Baseball. Great season from the Bucks comes to an end. North DeSoto, another team having a great year. Looking to make the quarterfinals for the first time since 2015 as they took on Cecilia coming up here in uh, the next game we're going to talk about. But look, the Griffins, last time out. A demoralizing loss. Their first chance to go 10-0 comes up short against Northwood. They still share the district title. But for them to bounce back the way they did tonight had to be impressive. John, it, it, it means a lot, especially in a game against a very tough Cecilia team. You see it here. Literally, Luke Delafield getting popped in the mouth. How do you respond? And how you respond is leaning on the things that got you to this point. Tough defense. Jordan Milton forcing a turnover. No one does it better. No one does it better than this North DeSoto defense. And tonight, again, it's the playoffs. You're, you're, you're going to get in these battles, right? How do you respond? You respond with your freshman quarterback connecting with his senior receiver, who's his cousin. It's the same stuff you see every single week. North DeSoto looks to be back on track. Sky's the limit. Sure is, and they've got a favorable bracket, especially with Carroll bowing out in round one in a major upset. That bracket's wide open. We move on to Manny. The Tigers were in the Dome last year. Every time they've lost the state championship, they've won it the next year. Their first chance to play a playoff game this year. Slow start, but they get it going in the second half. Slow start, they get it going. You know, I, I think for some of these early round games, especially this game tonight, I think Manny probably would have liked to see some more from their offense, right? Because we saw it stall out in the state championship game last year. You know yeah. they're going to play tough defense. You know they're going to hit you in the mouth. But, you know, offensively, you probably want to see a little bit more. Tonight it was the Tackett Curtis show. Uh, and you, you see it here on this effort. There's not many players in high school football capable of an effort like this. Uh, but I bet next week you'll, you'll see, a, you know, a little bit more from this Manny offense. Mm -hmm. And they'll be tuned up and ready to go well, come semifinal time. And also, I'll tell you that. talk about the offense. But you can't win if you can't score. This defense has been even more impressive than last year. I think that they haven't allowed a point since October 14th. I mean, that's, that's what, what I'm I saw. saying. You can't win if you can't score. I don't know who's going to score on them. Let's Speaking take a look scores. at some scores before we head to break. In Arkansas, Ashdown's year comes to an end. 63-27, up and down year for the Panthers. Shamar Easter, another senior. We won't see anymore. He's headed off to Arkansas. Great year from the Panthers and then Prescott. They just keep doing what they do. 41 to 6 over Salem. We'll see you after the break.